Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on everybody's favorite project, the G5 to ATX conversion. And um, I think it's been like a year since we've worked on this thing. Um, well, nine months. So, ten months? Are these not in order? What's happening? Anyways, it's been nine or ten months since we worked uh, on this case, so let's uh, let's get going on it again. I don't think we're gonna finish it today, but um, we're definitely gonna do some more work on it. So let me bring everybody up to speed. I have messed around with it a little bit here and there. Um, the back acrylic uh, motherboard panel. Let me get that light on there. There we go. Um, it sits up on this lip here. So it created a small gap behind the back panel and the acrylic glass. And when you screw a motherboard down onto it, there was a little bit of wiggle. Like you could flex the uh, the plexiglass a little bit until it touched uh, the back of the case. And I didn't like that. So um, if you can see there, I put some washers around those pegs um, just to space it out so that it sits nice and flat and level. Um, one of the things I want to do today is the, these things are, they're not pretty, <laughs> not at all. They're not aesthetically pleasing at all. And the, um, manufacturer of this, uh, conversion kit gives you these little washers that you stack over these. And then you put a screw through it to push it down and that, that's I think that's even uglier so my plan is gonna be to get rid of those I'm gonna measure um, how much material I have to cut off of this um, mounting peg here so that it's nearly flush maybe just a little bit below um, the glass and then I can use a screw and I'm hoping this is threaded all the way through it's probably not but if it's not, I can still thread it myself um, so that it'll be more flush mounted like these up here. And when I say these up here, I mean this right here. So let's get started on that. So I'm going to take my calipers here, um, measure the depth of what needs to be cut off on these. And it looks like about six and three quarters millimeter. Oh, that one's taller. That one's nine. Yeah, six and a half, six and three quarter. Um, this one's nine. That's that's taller. That's weird. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is just mark it with my sharpie, and then go in there and dremel them off. So this might take a, a try or two. As you can see, the markers, you know, it's too fat to fit in there, um, flush up against where the, uh, the glass is. So I'm gonna cut away the, uh, all the Sharpie marker and then maybe a little bit more. And like I said, hopefully it's threaded all the way in there. And if it's not, we'll just use a slightly larger screw and make our own threads. So to cut these pegs off of here, I'm gonna use, it's not a real Dremel, um, I used to have a real Dremel and it lasted like 10 or 12 years and then I bought another one, uh, not to rant on the Dremel name, but I, I bought another one that was I thought was the same model and it lasted like a year. Um, so their quality's really gone down. I got this from um, Harbor Freight. Um, I don't remember how long ago. It's, I mean, I don't use it a, a ton. Um, but I think I paid like $8 for it. It was one of their uh, like parking lot sales, like a, like a um, presidential 
President's Day sale thing. And it's, it's not as quiet, but it uses all of the same uh, Dremel attachments and tool bits and stuff. Anyways, long story short, this has been fantastic. It works great. It was eight bucks. If it dies, I don't care. I'll get another one for eight bucks. So here we go. There we go. I don't know if it's completely straight. Um, it's kind of hard to do it, uh, you know, make this face right here um, parallel with this face right here. That's why we're going to drill it or grind it down lower than the plastic of the acrylic. That way the screw will just bridge the gap between the two and we won't have to worry about a screw sitting in there flat. So I'm going to do it to these other two and I'll be right back. All right, all three of them are cut down. Um, I can tell they're not fully flat, like I said. That should be okay. Because we hang this on there. Whoop. That's pretty flat. That's a little bit lower. And that's a little bit Yeah, this is perfect. So I got three matching screws. Let's see if they thread in there. Ah, uh, there's no threads left. It doesn't feel like there's any threads left. Which, like I said, that's not a big deal. We'll just grab some screws that are slightly larger than that hole and make our own threads. So I got my own threads cut into these. Um, simply by running a screw down into them. Uh, I use pretty standard, like, whoa, like a regular computer screw, like a hard drive screw. However, this middle one, the hole uh, deads, um, the hole's not as deep as the other two. So I'll probably drill this one out a little bit. Well, actually, I'm going to drill it out a little bit because I would like to have a screw in there. So a little tip here, I mean, it's probably common sense, but um, when you're drilling uh, a hole for a, a screw, always start slightly smaller than you think you're going to need, because you can always drill the hole bigger, but you can't, it's real hard to fill a hole in. So this fits into the other two. No problem. Uh, this is getting in the way right here. This lip here is blocking the drill. I don't have a smaller drill, so we're going to send it. And of course, we don't want to go through the thing because um, this back panel here is the side case cover, so we don't want to go through that for sure. Oh yeah, that is perfect right there. So it's a steel screw going into aluminum, so the threads will cut pretty easily. There we go. Now, if I had a, a tap and die set, I could do this much more uh, professionally, but this this will work. All right, there we are. That is a heck of a lot nicer looking than a stack of plastic. And now it sits nice and flat. <clears throat> well, I mean the gap, the gap behind the glass and the back of the case is much more uniform. So I think that's a lot nicer. That's what we're gonna go with. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is tackle the problem that there is no, um, there's nowhere to put a standard size ATX power supply. So, well, I mean, let me start over. The kit that I opted to get 
doesn't have provisions for a standard ATX power supply. Um, you can get a kit that removes this shelf here and puts a ATX power supply up here. Um, it hangs, uh, it stuffs up inside of here, I believe. Um, we're not gonna do that. So we are going to, we're gonna retrofit a ATX power supply to fit in the factory shell. That way the um, power plug will stick out in the same exact spot and we'll use all the same sort of like um, uh, install method. You know, it, it'll screw down to these four holes in the bottom of the case, covered up with that, um, whatever it is, that shield, and it'll look stockish. The power supply that I'm hopefully gonna be stuffing down in there is this EVGA Supernova 650. the NEX 650G. It's a 80 plus gold certified and um, it's fully modular, which is kind of nice. So we're probably gonna end up cutting a panel that I can then mount this panel on so that we can plug um, you know, our cables in and out. Maybe that's not 100% sure how we're gonna do this, but we're gonna do it like it and do it some former fashion so let's crack this back open so I had some markings in here that I was going to drill um, from a different power supply that uh, for one reason or another I decided against using I don't quite remember what it was, but the idea is going to be remove this case, take the board out, mount it in here, and then the uh, fan that's in here, um, the two leads, we'll use those to power two small fans uh, to draw air through it. Let's take this adventure together and figure out what we got to do. Tools can be a hammer, most tools can be a pry bar. So, like I said, this panel here, we're gonna mount somewhere on the top, I think. Because of course that's that's too tall, that's not gonna work, so we're gonna have to flip it and have it lay flat. So we're gonna get this board out of here. Um, I want to see if I can't get away with not unsoldering anything because, especially on these big main ones, you need a lot of heat to solder those on. The board is usually pretty um, substantial. It's it's probably got like a lot of um, copper in it, and it wicks away your heat. And I'm I I can unsolder and resolder those back on, but they're not going to be as pretty as they are now. So we're not going to. Let me see if we can get away from that. Anyways, let's get this board out of here. And um, we'll get these switches, or the switch and the plug out. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. Flying blind, we're doing this project together. going to have to undo these four screws which will release this board from the case There we go. So now 
nearly everything is loose. The only thing holding this in is this. And we're gonna have to cut that, I think, like I said. Because I might want this base to make screwing the um, power supply guts down to it easier. So the base, I can just um, sit flat on this. And then those can, um, those little risers will be nice to have to keep it from grounding out. One week later. All right, where do we leave off? Um, all right. So we need to get all this guts out of the case into here. Um, before we do that, we should, uh, cause I'm gonna eliminate all of, you know, um, I wanna use the Apple, um, you know, power supply plug. Uh, so we're gonna eliminate this. I won't have a switch. It'll just be um, considered on if you plug it in. And um, because the original one, it didn't have a switch. There was no, um, there was no way to turn the power supply on and off. You just turn the computer on and off. Um, so basically what we're gonna have to do here is we're going to clip these wires uh, close up to the switch and remove them. Before we do that, though, I want to know, um, you know, which side of our plug here goes to which wire. And that's a pretty simple fix, I would imagine, or pretty simple uh, question to answer. Uh, so we're going to get out our multimeter here. And then all we got to do is touch one of them, and then touch one down here. There we go. Black. Black is this one. White is this one. I should probably write that down. So now that that is safely written down, we can start disassembling this. Um, like I said, I'm gonna clip these off. Give me the longest leads that I can. I could I could extend them if we need, but hopefully we won't need to. That's one. That's two. There we go. So now we should be able to pull this entire thing out of here. There we go. So what we're going to want to do now is figure out how we're going to orient this in here and how we're going to attach it. So it's going to sit in there like that. And this guy here, I would like to have it come out and maybe here where the wires originally came out, cut a um, opening and, and mount it in there somehow. I don't know yet. We'll figure that out. So I could cut this off and this off and then I have this nice you know these are all um, aligned properly and we could mount that in here somewhere somehow all right I've been monkeying around with this for a little bit um, trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount everything in here I think what I'm going to do and it it seems kind of like um, like a no dust sort of thing but this group of wires right here um, the, the yellow and I mean there's lots of yellow anyways this this particular bundle right here is short because it's supposed to mount like this so moving it anywhere like puts a lot of stress on them and I don't want to stress them out so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it like this um, straight up and down um, CPU and whatnot like this should be like the cooler and everything and th th this really should be out of the way I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of how this is going to mount in the case of course I want it to be aesthetically pleasing 
Um, but the way this is set up isn't allowing me to have a whole lot of choice. And um, it just kind of is what it is. So we're going to kind of flow with it. So I think it's going to be like this. Um, I had planned on putting it earlier like this. And before I started cutting, I mapped it out on the top case. And I'm not going to use that cut anymore. Because I do want to run fans. Um, the, the whole case um, is about this much longer. And I want to run fans here um, in a special bracket that I'm going to uh, install. And if this was here, it's kind of going to get in the way of that. So it's going to have to be like this, I think. So not that that's a big deal, but that's what I'm doing moving forward here. So let me do some measuring and whatnot. Um, I'm probably going to run a couple of, what a year in the way, uh, a couple of screws here from the underside up and then put, you know, a nut or something on the end. And that'll keep this down. I don't think we need anything over here on this side to hold it down. I think it's just going to stay down. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So let me get on with that and I'll be right back. All right. The power supply guts are mounted into the case. Um, all I did is take some flat uh, screws up through the bottom and then I didn't have any uh, nuts that would fit the thread. So I ended up just using motherboard standoffs and that, that works just fine. I've got this hooked up, uh, the power hooked up to the plug outlet or the plug connector, whatever you call this thing. And now really the only thing left to do is to cut for this. And I think I've gone back on my word and I'm going to cut it like this rather than like this. Because I think this is just going to look better. Um, looking at the case and how it's going to fit in there, I do believe that I'm going to have more than enough room to run fans in front of it. Because like I said, there is a gap of about this big in front of the power supply and the front of the case of the, um, the G5. So with this here, oh, I almost dropped this. With this mounted like this, there's going to be like this much room. So the fans will sit here and they'll just blow over it and, and no big deal. But it keeps this out of the way and I just think it's going to look better. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm going to go with my original design here, my original uh, cut. Cut this out and it, you won't see this piece. This gets covered up by this. So we're also going to have to cut this out. But again, no big deal. At least I don't think it will be. So I'll see you when this is uh, cut out because I think I got to go do this one outside because it's going to make a lot of noise and a lot of dust. All right. Back from outside. Nice little uh, notch cut out there. Cut pretty easily. It feels kind of bad cutting something like this. It's kind of unreplaceable, but you know. It's still, still fun, I guess. Anyways, um, I'm going to throw this on there. It's going to take me two hands to do this and um, the camera out of the way. Yeah, the lid is on it, but there's more modifications I have to do. I'm going to cut this rail off right here uh, to give room for these bundles of wires and stuff like that. Um, and also over here, the wires kind of rub up against, um, the case. So I'll probably, uh, you know, cut this a little bit wider, give it some more breathing room. Um, there's just going to be, uh, some trial and error fitment and, um, issues that you have to overcome, but, uh, yeah, I think it's coming out. I think it's going to look good. So I went down there and made some adjustments and now we sit pretty good. I still think I'm going to need to cut out a small chunk here and like, you won't see this because we're going to cover it up um, with the top plate, whatever this thing is called. Um, here, so you can see this. Inside of the case, there's this um, plate that goes above the power supply and um, kind of hides all the mess that's down there. It gives you mounting points for your G5 shroud and all that, but uh, anything that's on here that's kind of gross looking will kind of go away because we'll cover it. You don't have to see it. So the way we're going to do this, let me take this off. Now it is a bit fiddly. There we go. To, to take out of there. So I'm going to take, you know, to find out what I have to cut off of this, I'm going to take it. it 
and bolt it to the top of the power supply where it goes um, ultimately. There's these little, there we go, these little mounting holes. So I'm gonna bolt it to that and then I'll have a very good template from the bottom in which what I, to, to show what I need to cut. There we go, so this'll, see I've screwed in the, the screws, bolted that top of the power supply to this cover and now all I have to do is kind of just trace it and it should be perfect. Should be perfect. That's my favorite word, should. All right, after some more grinding and thinking and pondering and um, tinkering and iterations and more cutting, this is what I've come up with. Um, of course, there's nothing holding it on. It just kind of sits here right now, but that we're gonna take care of later. Um, my plan is to 3D print a bracket that will slide over the, well, it could come down. Anyways, I'm gonna design a bracket that affixes to the screw holes that are already on here, here, and then mounts to this plate. That way it'll hold it and you can plug things in and unplug them and it's not gonna, you know, push down into itself, which it sits pretty good. It's just nothing's gonna stop it from doing that. So that's what the bracket will do. It'll hold it on there. And then of course, there's probably gonna be a little bit more him and Han to make sure that none of those wires are going to stress themselves on the metal because we don't need a fire. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put cooling fans in there. And this is gonna be simple. This will be, this will be quick. So, like I said, this should be simple. Um, we're gonna take the lead for the old fan. Dust and schmoo on it. Anyways, uh, we're gonna take the lead for the old fan. The red wire is gonna be positive, 12 volts. Black wire is gonna be ground, negative, easy peasy. Flip this off. The fans that I'm gonna put in here, I know I talked about getting Noctua's, but Noctua's are ridiculously expensive and to fully kit this thing out with all the Noctua's that I wanted to put in here, um, to keep it quiet. It was gonna cost a lot of money, something over a hundred bucks. And well, if you follow my channel at all, you'll know I don't like to spend money. So I bought what I think is the next best thing. I bought, and of course there's a sticker on that one. I bought some PR1s, uh, 6x6x25, and these are supposed to be very, you know, it's the NB Black Silent Pro. These are supposed to be very quiet. It's supposed to rival, um, in, uh, it's supposed to rival Noctua. So, oh, that's cool. You do a little, like, case badge. That's awesome. So these come with a little um, anti-vibration thingamajig here. So the smaller a fan gets, usually the more vibration and the more noise it makes. So it's probably a good idea to use the little, uh, little anti-vibration thing. So I slipped that on. It was more difficult than it needed to be, but it is what it is. And instead of because I'm gonna cut some wires here, but they, these are really kind of nice, sheathed, black, um, pretty things. We're gonna save those, and we're gonna use something a little uglier for inside the power supply, because it doesn't need anything um, super cool. So we'll take both of these, and I'll get a, I have, I have two of these, but basically we're gonna connect those like that, and then clip it and connect them both up we can attach two sets of these to our existing um, connector to go to the little main board of our power supply. And these are not high um, powered fans. Uh, I don't remember when I read it. It's 12 volts, of course, um, but it doesn't show the amps on here. I thought it did. So it draws 12 volts, of course, and um, 0.72 watts. And 0.06 amps so very low draw and hopefully very quiet hopefully so before you put uh, the little 
anti-vibration pad on here. Make sure you pull your wires through because there's no provisions for running the wires through this. I suppose it could go up through there, but that's unnecessary. And then mount it in there. Really? With this anti-vibration pad, uh, these screws are just barely long enough. this fits with that on there and I'm gonna take it off change my mind I left it on what are you gonna do you can't stop me all right so let's make our splitter or wire reverse wire I don't know let's do the thing so I got two of these um, old fan uh, to Molex they probably have a name. I don't know what it is. So we'll clip those. So when, um, I don't know if I've shown these before, but I have wire strips. Um, you don't need anything like this. You can use uh, standard ones like these. Uh, but I, I, I have had these here a long, long time. And I noticed I, I, I lost them for a while and I bought a new set. And the new ones are not the highest quality. They're not the same as this. This, these ones here, these are fantastic. And then um, it might throw that little piece of plastic, you know, the sheath from the wire. So uh, be careful that you don't launch that somewhere you don't want it to be. But boom, look at that. I don't even know if I got that on, sh on camera because I was watching the, I was watching it instead of the camera. And I've had these, I've, I've stripped hundreds, thousands of wires with it. It just, it keeps working and I've left it out in the rain and it's rusty and it's gross. But it just works. So if you can find a set of these, keep them. Buy them and keep them. Don't let them go, don't let them get away. Now that I have them all stripped, we're going to connect like to like. So black to black, red to what red. Twist them together. Red to red. And we're setting this up so that we can use some crimps and um, people hate these with a passion and other people like them. I like them. Um, I don't have any heat shrink tubing, so that's kind of why I'm using them right now. But they make a really good positive connection. Lots of strength. There we go, let's give a double check. We got black to black, red to red. And then we're gonna take our friend over here. Again, black to black, red to red. Let's 
let's um let's actually route these down back behind there. So now we are all connected. And this thing is ready to slap back together. All right, so I got the case back on it. It's all assembled, and we have our modern power supply um, retrofitted into the case of the G5's power supply. Um, pretty much ready to put into the case. I have gone through a little bit of uh, work to make sure that we still have, you know, we can use the the white, um, you know, ATX power supply plug set up from the original power supply. And these fans should be, I would guess, far, far quieter than what used to be in there. And wow, look at all these scratches on my desk. And now it's fully modular, which is gonna be kind of nice. And I, I don't, I think this is kind of ugly, but I. I think we can make it look a little bit nicer once it's in the case. Um, like I said, I'm gonna 3D print something to go um, over top of this, all the way up to where these screw heads are, and hold it in place, lock it down, and I think it's gonna look fine. Maybe I can do custom, uh, you know, power supply cables, because this isn't gonna have to go very far, but the power supply cable is like, like this. You know, this long, man, I can't even see anything. It's this long, so the in the configuration, you know, in the case, the it's only gonna have to reach like this far. So maybe I'll cut this down and, and um, shorten it up a bit, do some custom cables, custom length cables, and um, it'll look uh, it'll look nice. So awesome. Uh, I'm excited about this project again. I, I know I haven't been working on it in quite a while and I do get comments and messages about, you know, when are you gonna work on the ATX conversion for the G5? Well, right now we're gonna get it done in the next couple of weeks here. So I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you are enjoying uh, my efforts here, please uh, give us a thumbs up and maybe consider su subscribing to the channel and um, I will see you in the next one where we're probably going to fit it into the case and um, probably mess around with the front I.O. on it. So I will see you then.